As the ice on the Great Lakes disappears, the shipping season typically begins. The move coincides with the Sioux Locks opening on Lake Superior at Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Fox 11's Eric Peterson takes us to Sturgeon Bay, where the winter fleet is starting to leave. Just we're at Bullhead Point, just, uh, just watching the windy conditions and hoping uh, she's safe out there. Even on a very windy Wednesday morning, Roseanne Hollander and her husband David are watching these ships and waiting. We're both retired. Yeah. <laughs> and we have time, and we just kind of all of a sudden took to this back in January for winter layover. Well, it uh, gets us out of the house for one, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it's just they're so big that it's just interesting to watch. The couple is checking out the winter fleet. The big boats gather here every year at Fincantieri Bay Shipbuilding in Sturgeon Bay for maintenance and repairs. We used to call it breakout breakout season. It was when the ships would break out through the ice and start the shipping season. Door County Maritime Museum Executive Director Kevin Osgood says because of the mild winter around the Midwest, seasonal work on Lake Superior's Sioux Locks wrapped up early. With the shipping companies being urged by the steel companies to get everything going sooner, it just all worked out that they're going to be able to open the locks a few days early. I would expect to see some of the ships that are here start to get underway in the next couple days. Boat watchers are monitoring the progress on the web and when it comes to the Hollingers from their car. We're definitely uh, boat nerds. We follow each of them in and uh, our goal is to watch each of them leave. In Sturgeon Bay, Eric Peterson, Fox 11 News. Experts say Great Lakes shipping is an important part of the maritime economy. They say one freighter can carry as much iron ore as 700 rail cars or 3,000 semis. It's enough steel to make 16,000 cars. Uh, tell me, uh, it's that time of year again, isn't it? The, uh, the winter fleet, is that kind of what this happened um, this time of March, right? End of March is kind of when they set sail, right? Right, the, the winter fleet comes in to get some much needed maintenance and some inspections done by the Coast Guard. And we, we used to call it breakout breakout season. It was when the ships would break out through the ice and start the shipping season. But the lack of ice, it's even uncomfortable calling it breakout season anymore. Um, but this year, the shipping season is going to start a little earlier because of the lack of ice and the mild winter. And it kind of worked together. The Army Corps of Engineers had a lot of work to do on the pole lock up at the Sioux locks. And the mild winter put them ahead of schedule. So with the shipping companies being urged by the steel companies to get everything going sooner, it just all worked out that they're going to be able to open the locks a few days early and get the shipping season started earlier than they usually do. So that kind of trickles down to here. Does that mean people are going to head out here sooner, or what do you think? We, I would expect to see some of the ships that are here start to get underway in the next couple of days. Um, if we're talking about March 22nd, all the locks and the and the the St. Lawrence Seaway being open, I would expect to see these ships getting underway and, you know, starting to move. A ship tied up to the dock, a freighter tied up to the dock does not make money for the shipping company. So they will get underway pretty soon. Wow. What is it about the winter fleet that people love? I mean, today it was, it was breezy, breezy out there at Bullhead Point. People were still out there checking it out. I mean, what is it about the, the big boats that people dislike? You know, I, there's so many things about the Great Lakes fleet. Um, some of them are the history of the ships. Some of them are the ones, especially here in Sturgeon Bay, the ones that were built here are tied to this community. You may have had family that worked on constructing that ship and now to see it come in is that impressive. If you're new to the area and you haven't stood 15 feet from a Great Lakes freighter to kind of feel the enormity of it, yeah. it, it, is, it is pretty memorable and a wowing experience to, to undergo. So there is a lot of mystique and draw to that to experience that, especially when they go through the shipping canal here in Sturgeon Bay, because yeah. you are literally 10, 15 feet from the side of the ship as it goes by. And if you're lucky enough for the master to sound the, the whistle, um, then you feel you're in every bone in your body vibrate with that ship's whistle. 
Wow, okay. Anything else you want to add about the, uh, the Minute Fleet? I know that uh, some ships are further along than others. It looks like some are still getting paint jobs and stuff. I mean, not everybody's ready to take off. Not, every, not everybody's ready to take off just yet. But one of the things that's important to keep in mind with why this is so important is the amount of cargo these ships can carry. One Great Lakes freighter can carry as much iron ore as 700 freight cars or 3,000 semi-trucks. Imagine waiting at a railroad crossing for 700 cars to go by. I don't know how long that would take or how, long that, how many miles that train would be, but that's one Great Lakes freighter. And the steel industry, if they have that coming in, I think I read that one Great Lakes freighter with iron ore, with that steel, they can construct 16,000 automobiles. Wow. So it, it's important to our economy to get these ships going in the spring. Now, how we've had kind of a very mild winter here, I know normally Lake Superior kind of freezes more. I mean, did they have any ice up there either? Or they, what, what's it been like up there? They, had, they did not have significant ice on Superior either. So um, a lot, some ships have been already moving for a couple of weeks. They just haven't been able to traverse the locks or the seaway. So this just really opens things up, and it's, it's all, all ahead full once these locks and the canal open up. Oh yeah, Purvis is over there too. I saw him today. The red tugboat. It's not here. contributing to say, we know, winter fleet and a tugboat. Big part of the winter fleet, yeah. But it's still over there. Is April seventeenth, is that when it's due back? 15th. Oh, April fifteenth, tax day. Yeah, but one of the one of the ships in the shipyard this year for Winter Fleet is our museum tugboat, the John Purvis, that was launched in 1919. She was getting some much-needed attention to her stern section of the hull. We hope to see her move for a breakout season as well. Hopefully by the middle of April, she'll be back here at the pier behind the museum.